I'm actually a six foot six dorky guy with long blonde hair. <laughs> Even though there's all this, all these things on top of me, I'm still very much in control of, of eyebrow movement. You still get all the same facial subtleties that you get out of a normal human face. No matter what the others say, I see you and me together. Daga, tell me, let me help you. Who is Lolan? As soon as you get a locked off mask, which you do get in lots of prosthetic work, then you really lose a sense of, of that character being real if you don't get all the subtleties of, of emotion and mood and psychological change that the face portrays. Unlike Dargo, Zahn only requires a small amount of prosthetic work on her ears. This doesn't mean Virginia Hay spends any less time in preparation. Her face and body paint can take up to three hours to apply each morning. Um, she's a very highly evolved spiritual being and um, as a result she tackles conflict in a different way to most mere mortals, if you like. Um, she doesn't agree that violence is the solution. She'll always try and tackle something via um, the most peaceful method, you know, talking it through, trying to reason with people. So oh, here you go. Quite respectable for your age. Did you think you'd shock me? Is nudity a taboo in your culture? Are you ashamed of your bodies? Yeah, we would be if we looked like you. I doubt it. She's like a central point that pass she pacifies everyone and, and ties everybody together, if you like. I think she's got a great handle on Dargo, and she really knows how to put him in his place and when, because often when he's off blustering, trying to take over, she's actually the one who can come along and go, look, settle down, Dargo. There's actually another way to go here. How old are you? Thirty cycles. Mm, you are but a boy. I am not. I am a Luxon warrior. I have seen two battle campaigns. Only two. A creature workshop was specially set up at the Fox Studios. It was populated by a mixture of UK and Australian experts. This shop is responsible for building the many different aliens that appear from episode to episode. When the writers saw this character, they liked it so much, they wrote a show around it. So we're now currently rebuilding it and uh, making it more sophisticated. Yeah, to attack! This is one of the DRDs. Um, and it's like a little mechanical droid that sort of looks after Moya and uh, scurries around and sort of repairs things when they break. Was that necessary? It felt good. Give me navigation now. This is uh, a mechanical tentacle that's being built for um, a mechanical called Jarbo. Um, we really don't see much of him. He's kind of just a shadow in the background in a cage and he's sharing a, a cell with Rigel in one of the episodes. Is there a problem? Whichever way they move the control, so this thing follows. Hey, hey, tentacles off, tentacles off. What do you think you're doing? It was unwanted by you. Doesn't mean you can have it. But enough of aliens. Isn't there another human apart from John Crichton on board Moya? What is your rank and regiment? She is human in appearance. But she's a different, comes from a different race and a different galaxy completely. Where are you from? He claims to be a human from a planet called Earth. So it's extraordinary when she comes into contact with John Crichton because she just doesn't understand him at all. We know all. almost nothing about the tabloids. Tablex. Whatever, tabloid, tab. We do know that they will pay us to haul cargo, which they're not going to do if you go in there doing your John Wayne impression. John Wayne, who's that, a relative? John Wayne? Oh, it's the big guy. The True Grit, the Searchers, the Cowboys, Genghis Khan. No, look, forget about Genghis Khan. Everybody makes a bad movie. But the look, point is... It... No, the point is, I'm not going to meet that shuttle unarmed. Simple as that. 
She probably finds him devastatingly handsome, but she's not very happy about that concept at all. Kung Fu. Kung Fu never carried a gun. He complains. Ben complains and says that I hit him harder than anybody and it's not fair. Now let's go. No, absolutely not. There are other things that we can do. We can try negotiating with the tabloids. We can... Lex. Because the stunt double's far more brutal with him than I'll ever be. But he likes to give me a hard time about that. Next time you hit me, make sure that I don't wake up. Oh, don't me. This is not over with. And when it is, you and I are going to sit down and have a serious talk. Sure. When this is over, you and I will probably be dead. When we first saw her audition, we thought, that's not what we imagined. It was sort of thought that, hmm, she doesn't, that's not really what we saw. And then you watch her for 10 seconds and you, you can't stop. She gives me a Woody. Woody, it's a human saying. I've heard you say it often. When you don't trust someone or they make you nervous, they give you willies. She gives you the willies. I think she's kind of like a contemporary Emma Peel in a way. Funky, groovy chick. I call her Cyber Spice now. That's really who she is. Hurry! So, apart from confused humans, an anarchist priestess, living spaceships, teenage warriors, paranoid pilots, angry aliens, and female commandos dressed head to toe in black leather, what sets Farscape apart from anything else on television? It's the choices. It's it's Rigel. You wouldn't find Rigel in any other television show. Rigel now. <laughs> Crichton. Now, Rigel. Crichton. Rigel, now. Now, Rigel! Take them! The whole thing has an alienness, a daringness that you don't see on television. You see in features, you know, every year there's probably one or two features that are this bold. But you don't see it on television, and, and that's sort of what we were always trying to do. Brian and I would joke, oh, we're doing the film today, because we have so many setups. We have CGI, we have split-screen shots, we've got creatures coming in, we've got the puppeteers all over the floor. And you go, my gosh, this is overwhelming. This show, to me, um, has the scale and the, the look and the um, uh, aspirations to, to really be uh, an example of what I think entertainment in the 21st century is going to become. It's overwhelming to be at the center of it. All I've ever wanted to do in my life is fly, fly in a spaceship. <laughs> I'm flying a spaceship every day. Life is good. <laughs>